Okay, so uh, one last thing um, on this is simulation. So we kind of talked about like you have a situation that you can't actually test in. One good way to do this is simulation. So um, some reasons you might want to do this are the device is too expensive or too time consuming to make to break, right? So if you're at, you know, Boeing and you're making jets, you'd much rather run some analysis on one of these jets than you would to take one out and crash test it, right? Because that's expensive. Um, and it takes a long time to make them. So if you're thinking about a test on a piece and say, I need to break 15 of these to see if um, this test passes so that I get you know, some statistical spread, that'll cost you a lot if they're 747s or something. Um, again, the environment not being available for you to use, so that's kind of the, the problem you have with Camp Riley. Um, but you know, if you're at a big corporation that has endless money to spend, this could be deep space, it could be deep in the ocean, things like that, where you can't go and test them in the environment they're going to use them. Or if you're designing something, say, for an event that's going to happen, and you can't make that event happen sooner, but you can look for a simulation either on a computer or you can look for an analog, right? So I'm designing a 50-foot stage for some production. Um, I could design a 5-foot stage and put on a tenth of the load and get an equivalent, right? So you can kind of do scale models, things like that, to try and represent the situation. Yeah. Would you forfeit like direct testing for the base case? Because I feel like there's a certain point where you have to say, okay, this is too expensive, or we don't have like the area to test it, but if it's like a large scale product, like let's say a spaceship or something like that, it's kind of like, do we forfeit, like obviously we can't direct test, but how much Yeah, so again, it's tied to the risk, right? So if it's a high-risk situation, you're going to run as many simulation tests or analog tests as you can until you believe that you know, it's going to be a safe situation because you simply can't test it in that environment. In medical devices, usually you have to walk through multiple steps. So you'll do bench testing, and then you'll do animal testing, and then you can only get to human testing after you've passed those those hurdles. <coughs> so you, you don't want to put people in that situation of being injured by a product early on. So, uh, you know, as many kind of layers as you can build of confidence before you get there, the better, right? But like, it, like everything else, there's time and cost and those things that you have to balance out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it always exercise safety first mindset. But at some point, you know, there would be no such thing as a cardiac pacemaker if no one had ever tried one out on a person, right? So it, it, at some point, there's an acceptable level of risk, but you have to get to where it's acceptable level. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So there's no easy answer for when it's okay um, or when you suffer for not having that environment. Sometimes you just simply can't have it, right? Um, so um, one particular type of simulation that you'll probably see some point in your career is um, a a finite element analysis. So this is actually a concept that's existed for a long time of basically breaking some big complicated geometry into a small geometric piece that you understand the geometry, right? So if you're looking at stresses in a donut and you're trying to smash it lengthwise, that's really hard to calculate. But if you could break that thing into little cubes or triangles, then it's much easier. Um, but only in sort of recent, you know, comparatively recent years, have we had the computational power to run these efficiently? Um, today, it's actually really easy. There's nice user interfaces, so you can look at um, solids, fluids. You can do this with circuits somehow or another, for those of you who understand how to do that sort of thing. Um, and you can look at you know, a mathematical model <coughs> of a real situation. So uh, a good example is um, Coke Biotech. It has a, they're headquartered in Bloomington, but they have um, offices here. They do arterial stents. They do a lot of finite element testing because it's really difficult to test inside a human's artery, right? It's a difficult test to run. So they do lots and lots of simulation so that they can build that confidence to run these tests in a person, right? So that they know what they're doing. Um, but I would just caution you to interpret the results of those FEA tests very um, critically because it's really easy to get anomalies in your results and be led astray. So 
if you run those and you're gonna put this into a high risk situation, make sure that you, one, work with someone who has some expertise, and um, <coughs> two, go through and do the verification and validation of that test, right? So you actually verify that that test matches reality. Does that make sense to everybody before you trust those? Um, those are easy to lead you astray, but very powerful tool. All right, so uh, for one last exercise here before I let you go, uh, I just wanted to choose one James Bond gadget. And it doesn't have to be one that you talked about here. You can pick any James Bond gadget. If you don't know what James Bond is, I'm sorry. Um, it's a secret agent, so think of any kind of uh, spy gadget you can. Write two user needs and um, validation tests for those, and two specifications with the verifications for those, and of those that you came up with, pick one set to write a um, testing verification testing protocol, okay? Uh, so we've got about eight minutes, should be plenty of time. I'll give you about five minutes to write that, and we're gonna have three minutes of quick discussion. Go ahead. And none of you brought paper. <laughs> If you don't have anything to write on, you're welcome to come up to the board and you can write up here. What gadget are you going to choose? Necktie camera? It's classic. Spy camera. What about you? What, what uh, device are you going to write about? I'm trying to see what is gadget, what is James Bond gadget. You're trying to find out what one is, or you're just yeah. trying to look up an example? Yeah, I'm trying to, I, So, I so that video had several, like the ejector seat, or okay. the machine guns off the side of a car, or, uh, you know, these shoes that are telephones, or any kind of spy gadget will do. What gadget are you writing about? I'm doing the ejector seat. Ejector seat? Yeah, the last one I saw was Casino Royale, I think. And I can't think of any specific gadgets for that. Yeah, the old ones had featured yeah, a more had gadgets. More gadgets but it's harder to be creative now that so many real gadgets yeah. exist. Yeah, you know, back then they were all no pretty much pretend. Be able to withstand a certain pressure. Yeah. What, uh, what gadget are you guys doing? What gadget are you guys doing? We're, uh, we're just trying mm. to decide this on our own. <laughs> go, go on. There, there's machine guns that come off the side of the car. Yeah. Shoots missiles out of the bag.
you guys starting on your protocol yet? No, not yet. We're blinking on the yeah. first one. Yeah. Did you guys come up with a gadget back here? You still trying to figure out what they are? I was like, no. Yeah? Um, there's Vive Fun Facts. It's, it's a good one. It's on the Alexa stand. It's a good one? Oh. What are you working on? I just saw an atomic bomb. An atomic bomb? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't consider that a <laughs> spy <laughs> gadget, per se. <laughs> Yeah, and there was one listed in <laughs> Wikipedia, <laughs> which is really fun. <laughs> well, I think you guys might be my first two who have <laughs> looked up g James Bond gadgets and come <laughs> 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 I feel like I'm the only one that's ever been in like the news before, but I just like looked at it. I probably have been. Well, if you were a spy, what kind of gadget would you want to have on hand? Spy sunglasses would be pretty sweet. I'd want the uh, Zippo lighter that turns into a grenade, you know, something like that. That'd be handy. Because it looks stylish, too. All right, if you haven't started working on your protocol yet, you might want to do that in the next minute. Does anybody have their protocol started? Yeah? All right, we're, we're running short on time, so we'll, we'll wrap up. Do you guys want to share your protocol? <coughs> All right, so our gadget, I'm not sure if it's an actual James Bond gadget or we just made it up, but it's like an umbrella that's like a, kind of like a helicopter that stands from the sea to get away. Okay, helicopter umbrella. That's nice. Okay, very good. So they have a specification that it should be able to have enough lift to lift 300 pounds of mass and had a verification protocol to attach weights and have it lift. So you could measure that amount of weight, say yes or no, it passed this, you know, was able to lift this much weight. So that's an excellent pair. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, this is a short period of time to write your protocol, but you know, you'd want to specify you know, and what, you know, is it started from the floor and, you know, those kind of things. What kind of, um, you know, do you have an engine control? Do you have to turn it to some setting or it's just full on? Because it's just full on, you're probably, <laughs> <laughs> once you get it up, you're going to keep going up for a while. Uh, so, you know, those kind of things, but great job. So does that make sense to everybody? Get a little clearer picture on VNV? Good. All right. Well, this is the last lecture for the semester, so if you still need lecture credits, uh, talk to your advisor, and you can do peer reviews um, at Design Review. So you could get as many credits as you want that week, really. Um, so there's 36 teams. You could, well, a lot of them meet at the same time. You could get at least 18 credits if you wanted to go to all of them all week long. But good luck on your final.